Bloop a doop a doo. Bloop a doop a da ba Happy Halloween, everybody. Uh, we are going to be talking about TV in 1990 today. I'm Michael. I'm Molly. I'm Erica. And we will be your guides. Some new shows in 1990. First, we've got... Yay. It was cheesy, as most things in the 90s were, and it was a actually a pretty good adaptation of the book. I mean, the books are always better. But, um, you know, they just tried really hard to match the personalities of the kids to the personalities in the stories. And, you know, it wasn't, I don't know if it was around all that long, but I do remember liking renting the videotapes from Blockbuster. Which was obviously iconic and a critical and cult favorite, but it only ran for two seasons originally. And I've never seen any of it. Yeah, no, I've never seen it either. Although I feel like, yeah, people love that show. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm which of course had a huge cast of big names. Keenan Wayans, Damon Wayans, Sean Wayans, Marlon Wayans, Jamie Foxx, Jim Carrey, Jim Carrey. and David Allen Greer. And uh, at different points, there were some big name fly girls, including Rosie Perez and Jennifer Lopez. Jennifer Lopez, yes. Yeah. Got her start as a fly girl on In Living Color. Yeah. Yeah. I, didn't know that. I think it's interesting that we have Jim Carrey as the token white guy of the cast. Mm -hmm. And so, like, I don't know how to talk about this as a white person, so I'm going to try to tread carefully. But, like, it was basically a, a black answer to other sketch comedies. It was, I, as far as I know, really the first of its kind, a show that had a predominantly black and brown cast and a hip-hop soundtrack with the Fly Girls dancing in between numbers that was getting, I think, a really wide viewership. I remember my parents watching it, but I don't remember much about I it. I extremely remember my parents watching it, and it had Tony Shalhoub That's exactly, on it. I have, a, I have a note about that. Yes. <laughs> they were on Martha's Vineyard, right? It was like a small airport in Martha's Vineyard, and like one guy was a pilot, and Tony Shalhoub was a cab driver. Yeah, my it, that was that's definitely a show that like my memory of it is my parents watching it. My parents were too old to watch Wings or anything fun. <laughs> they watched Matlock a lot. <laughs> because America's Funniest Home Videos was not enough. We had to have another show that was basically the same show. I think they were on right after each other, too. I don't remember that one. Wild and Crazy Kids was new in 90. Yeah, so I'm trying to remember what that show was. Was It was like a game show, right? Yeah, it was on Nickelodeon, and it featured a lot of um, different kids doing physical challenges, mental challenges, uh, sort of similar to Double Dare, but... Right, that's more... what I was thinking, that it, that it was kind of like back-to-back -back with Double Dare. It was a lot more outdoor activity and a lot more, like, wide-ranging kinds of activity. Like, it wasn't just about... Double Dare was kind of about making a mess at its core and Wild and Crazy Kids was more about like what kind of crazy stuff can we do like in different places. Did the winners get to go to space camp? Probably. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, so I want to talk about like, cause well, first of all, whoa. Yeah. But <laughs> I do remember, what was his name, Joey? Yeah. And what was the actor's name? Cause he was like a heartthrob, he, right? He was Joey also. Joey. Yeah. Let me look. What happened to him? He's still acting, actually. Really? Yeah. Okay, and then of course everybody knows that like Maya Bialik is now like you yeah. know Joey Lawrence. Uh, Joey, Joey Lawrence. Lawrence. Yeah, she's now like the host of Jeopardy or whatever. But I just remember like the blossom hat, and I remember being yeah. like, "Mom, Dad, I need a blossom hat, <laughs> mm -hmm. right? Like the big floppy hat with the huge flower on it. <laughs> that was like the fashion statement. I and needed a blossom hat. Was Blossom on the TGIF lineup? I think so. I think so. And next door neighbor Six coming over. Six! Yeah, because you always had to have one. She was like Blossom's answer to Kimmy Gibbler. <laughs> Except Six was way cool. I mean, Kimmy oh, Gibbler was Six was, was funny, definitely but... cooler. I remember seeing her in like teen magazines and stuff, mm -hmm. right? She was super popular. Yeah. There was a Ferris Bueller TV show. Was there? There was. How long did it last? Probably not very long. I, I don't know if I have noted, that noted. It starred Jennifer Aniston. Interesting. Yeah, that, that was her big break, actually. This is, and it was like, I think her only credit before Friends. I feel like if you take the movie, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, and try to extend that universe into a TV show with Ferris Bueller as the main character, what do you get? Saved by the Bell. <laughs> <laughs> 
I think I watched sometimes, but That's not much. That's the one with the duck guy. No, it's the cast of Jungle Book, basically. Oh, um, I do remember and that And it's it, the main character is Baloo. Yes, and I do remember that one. And he like runs up. He flies like, a plane. He flies a plane, yeah. yes. <laughs> And they dress like Jungle Book was animals in the jungle. This one, they dressed them up and trying to tried to humanize them. Yeah, they wore clothes and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so this was like definitely like part of my Saturday morning cartoon <laughs> routine, and I just remember the theme song "Attack of the Killer, Killer Tomatoes." Tomatoes. Yeah. I must have missed this one because I, like you said, I was I was aware of its existence, but I don't think I ever watched it. I don't think I ever watched it either, but I think I saw ads for it all the time that yeah. still had that theme song. I it. definitely watched it, but I don't remember like other than the talking Killer Tomatoes. I don't remember like exactly what happened or mm -hmm. like yeah. who you were supposed to be rooting for because I feel like we were rooting for the tomatoes honestly. Like, they, <laughs> I mean how could you not? I think they were the villains but and like the mad scientist who led them. I, I, yes I read it. was it. a mad scientist. I, I read, it, read about it on the Wikipedia page for it but it like promptly left my head. I think this is kind of how Howie Mandel started to become a household name. Yeah. It sort of was the majority of his career. He was a yeah. comic too but he did he did not just the main character who was kind of based on him as a child. He did several voices for the for the entire series. I think we all probably remember the intro because it was it was Bobby driving yeah. his little toy car and it's been mocked many times by a series like The Simpsons and The Family Guy. It was a lot of fun. And it was it was another one that was good for adults too. Well, and I always thought of like the mom had that Minnesota accent. Mm -hmm. Don't you know. That don't you know. And you never saw her face, right? It was only like her legs. No, we saw no, her. I think, yeah. Yeah. Um, you're, that that was like Muppet Babies and okay. mm -hmm. Peanuts. Like it's all blurring yeah. together. Like Polly Shore voiced a side character in Bobby's World. I feel like Polly Shore did a lot of that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I feel like Bobby's World was kind of a precursor to like Rugrats, right? Mm -hmm. It was the baby going on you know, hijinks. Yeah. <laughs> and didn't um, Howie Mandel usually show up in the end credits live action yeah, yeah they had an interaction between his live person and bobby in yeah. cartoon form with the uh, with the roger rabbit technology yeah, yeah. no because i remember like that being revolutionary when roger rabbit came out and then afterwards yeah. it was just sort of commonplace <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh okay who's gonna do the rap <laughs> it's so funny because like so Will Smith, The Fresh Prince, mm -hmm. and Jazzy Jeff, right, were like rappers, but I think our generation don't really know him as rappers. We know him from the TV show. I have a vague memory of of when his first, their first big hit came out, and, and it being completely eclipsed in my mind. Parents by the just show. don't understand. Yeah. That show was really like, how it must have run for 10 years because I feel like it is a backdrop for my entire childhood yeah. and I remember like watching like the final episode of the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air in the end and I remember watching several like very special episodes yeah. the very you know and those still carry weight you know yeah. there was a lot of profound moments on that show and there's so many elements of it that have carried through pop culture to this day like the whole drama over the change of mom character remember that well that yeah that happened in a couple of 90s sitcoms which was always like controversial because it yeah. wasn't Roseanne, Roseanne where the sister yeah. changed. Yeah and it happened in Family Matters the mom there changed yes. too and I, I saw this funny card on this website I like that does gifts and stuff. It was a Mother's Day card it said you're my favorite mom and it had this picture of Aunt Viv on the front. <laughs> the, 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 first one. the first Aunt Viv. That's great. It was way better because yeah. she could like dance and sing and, and yeah there was that spunk. scene where she did the like yeah she did the dancing. dance class. Yes oh man. Alfonso Rubin is just like <laughs> so fun. Yeah. He is. Yeah, the Carlton dance. Yeah. yeah. And, like you could do that dance now mm -hmm. and everyone at least our age would get it. Yeah. yeah. Like our parents would get it probably, you know. <laughs> he definitely was like a scene stealer yeah. on that show. He yeah. was the clown. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He was the Steve Urkel of the show. Yeah. And the Jeffrey with his yes. um his Cutting <laughs> dry yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. yeah. And um, then the sister, Hillary. Hillary. Um, yeah, I remember so many like because she was like the dits, but she was also like she had some some like zingers as well. Her character's growth was kind of integral to the show mm -hmm. because she starts off as just this like princess yeah. and then she like becomes a news anchor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
Yeah. Still a ditz, but at least yeah. yeah. And then what, what was the younger sister's name? Because Ashley. She was Ash, at, no, but the actress. She had a, like a really oh, famous career. That t- uh, Tatiana, Tatiana Ali. Ali. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, she was great. They were all great. Yeah, I totally forgot when I was looking this up that Brian Stokes Mitchell and Tyra Bank, Tyra Banks had recurring yeah. uh, roles. Brian on the show. Stokes Mitchell. And I think at the time I didn't know who Brian Stokes Mitchell was. Actually, I probably didn't know who Tyra Banks was either at the time. <laughs> I remember Boys to Men speak. Mm-hmm. Yes! Mm-hmm. My favorite. Do you remember the episode where there's an earthquake and they get mm-hmm. stuck in the basement and then he finds out that his girlfriend had like a wig and fake nails and yeah. like inserts in her bra and he found out like, like everything on her was fake? That was why it was a big deal because she was fiance. They were like about to oh, get married. Right. And what, that, like, was that Tyra? Because I remember she was his no. girlfriend on and off again, I think. No, I that I would remember if it was Tyra. No, she was small. She she didn't have those supermodel looks. Tyra, <laughs> Tyra, Tyra was when he was in college and then she was kind of more on again off again because she was very independent i forget mm-hmm. who that girl was yeah no i don't remember either but i, I just remember what she was wearing in that episode it was like yeah. a black and white dress similar to like mm-hmm. i don't know what i saw in a lot of prom magazines at the time <laughs> <laughs> side note alfonso ribeiro now is hosting america's funniest home videos <laughs> is he because he's also hosting dancing with the stars which he's kind of having a little renaissance right now in what a career trajectory yeah. <laughs> he has, he's got the perfect attitude to be like the kind of smarmy host well, and and, but still so lovable yeah and it started when he was on dancing with the stars a couple of years ago he actually killed at that the guy can actually dance mm-hmm. and now he's like hosting all these things and these specials and now apparently he's got these full-time dates. i feel like the host of those two tv shows is like what actual carlton would aspire to <laughs> <laughs> what i think of what i think of law and order is i think of all of the sort of no-name actors mm-hmm. in new york that would get like bit parts on it as like you know a dead body or whatever yeah. and i'm sure all of them worked as extras at some point well right and i just like i think of like you know because like we all were in the arts and like we had friends that like went to try to pursue careers in new york and i remember seeing like in facebook like i'm gonna be on law and order <laughs> <laughs> even some big name celebrities got to play one yes. roles that are like completely yeah. against type just because like hey, it's one episode <laughs> Adventures it's about to start. Oh my god, I loved that show. And I loved the video game, by the way. Um, Tiny Toon Adventures was based on these kids. They were the children the of the chi- Looney Tunes. No, they weren't the children of them. They were children in that world. The, the original Looney Tunes characters were professors at Acme Loo University. Right. And they were, so they were taking classes with Porky Pig and, and Bugs Bunny, but it, they were entirely in their own world and in their own storylines. And like Babs and Buster Bunny had this great yes. love-hate relationship. And, you know, we saw miniature versions of like, well, like we had the rich millionaire who was a little brat and things like Max. that. So yeah, Max, Maximilian. Max um, so we had a lot of the same stereotypes from the Looney Tunes, but with a 90s twist and a lot more uh interactive storylines we didn't yeah. see a lot of the cartoons where you have bugs and daffy and porky and all of them doing it together right. it was like more separate this time they were all in the same show like i i said before like it was definitely in my like saturday morning cartoon line yeah <laughs> and the best episodes were always the ones where they had baby plucky oh my god Ducky go down to hole. Yeah. <laughs> Elevator go up. Elevator go down. Oh my god, I haven't thought about it in years. Oh. This was when like the whole like Warner Brothers brand became like a thing. Yeah. And they had in the Tyson's Corner Mall, which now everybody who's watching this knows where we live. <laughs> or I think where we've told I them grew before. up. Yeah. Um, they had the WB store, right? Oh, yeah. Like, because there was, like, the Disney store on one corner, and there was the WB store, and you could get... And, like, every... Remember, this was when everybody was wearing, like, T-shirts and stuff that had, like... Bugs Bunny with like sagging pants, yeah. right? Do you or guys like, remember that? I or, had one of those. Or Tweety as a as like a badass. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> that Why was, was like a whole a moment yeah. in like the early nineties was like classic Warner Brothers characters wearing like hip hop attire 
on clothes. Yeah. And it was, you know what it was? It was also like the Space Jam era, right? Yeah. Like, so I don't know when Space Jam comes out. Probably not till like 1995. Something like that. Later, yeah. But uh, I feel like that ties in with all of this. And then like the um, Animaniacs, which probably are going to come up in a couple years. Like it all was in this universe that like then just sort of fizzled. Mm-hmm. And, you, and you know who was at the center of this was Steven Spielberg, who created Tiny Toons. Oh, Tunes, right. Who was also in his heyday, clearly. So... Wow. Okay, we gotta do this theme song too. <laughs> and then there's the rap, which comes after a little into the. <laughs> the power is yours. The power is yours. Yeah. Yes, and the, with our powers combined, yeah. I am Captain Planet. Yeah. Wind. Wow. Earth. Oh fire. Wind. Water. Yes. Heart. Heart. <laughs> oh, poor heart. Where would Greta Thunberg be with, <laughs> without uh, Captain Planet? <laughs> right. I think she was born about 10 years after the, the show. The Planeteers <laughs> walked so Greta Thunberg could run. <laughs> One of my favorite things about Captain Planet is looking through all of the voice actors who have done it. I'm going to read you a long list here. LeVar Burton, Whoopi Goldberg, Ed Asner, Tim Curry, Margot Kidder, Meg Ryan, Martin Sheen, Jeff Goldblum, Sting, Fred Savage, Phil Hartman, Elizabeth Taylor, Neil Patrick Harris. Wait, 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 wait. Elizabeth Taylor? The Elizabeth Taylor. I didn't know she did any voice acting. Neil Patrick Harris, Lou Rawls, Vanna White, Fred Schneider, Danny Glover, Phyllis Diller, Dionne Warwick, Rita Moreno, Casey Kasem, Helen Hunt, Brian Stokes Mitchell, again. Oh no! <laughs> and John Lovitz. Most of these people um, played a villain for one episode. This is just incredible. <laughs> it's shocking how many people are on this. And if we were playing like Six Degrees of Kevin Bacon, if you can get to Captain Planet. <laughs> Like, <laughs> Wait, here's what I want to know. I want to know if Captain Planet was funded by oil companies to trick us into thinking that personal responsibility is how we solve the climate crisis. I have no idea. <laughs> That's certainly the cynical take on it. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> for, for more cynical takes, <laughs> find me on Twitter. <laughs> no, find me on Twitter. I never saw an episode. Me neither. Brenda, uh, Luke Perry, Luke Perry, right? So I always get Luke Perry and Jason Priestley mixed up in my head. Like which one? Like if I think of either of them, I think of I think it's Luke Perry's face. They're secretly yeah. the same person. <laughs> yeah. No. So okay. So for me, this is what nine hundred two one zero represented for me as a five year old girl, <laughs> <laughs> or more likely like a six or seven year old girl, because the show was on for several years. It was like. I had no business watching this television program, which was clearly for adults. <laughs> and also, like, there was, like, schoolyard talk about it. And so you wanted to know what everybody else was talking about, whose parents were apparently letting them watch this television show for adults. <laughs> so, like, we would talk, me and, like, the other girls in the playground at recess would talk about what happened on 90210. And, and then we would, like play 902 and I was like, I'm going to be Brenda <laughs> and I'm going to be, um, who, who, Tori Spelling's character. Yes, the Tori Spelling character. Like, and then, like, who was going to be the boys and, like, who was going to kiss who and, like, all of this stuff. <laughs> this was my very scandalous childhood playground <laughs> activity. I think the culture at the time was, like, this is a cheesy soap opera mm-hmm. for teenagers that is stupid and so we're gonna make fun of it because right. it's not cool to like 90210 right. unless you're a five-year-old at Woodburn <laughs> Elementary School <laughs> in which case it is extremely cool to like 90210 and you have to pretend that you know all about it <laughs> in later seasons even Hillary Swank was a main character on 90210 okay I see that ending in 1990 Miami Vice which had been running since 84 Mama's Family, which I've been running since 83. Mama's Family. <laughs> Alf ended. Alf! <laughs> I've been running since 86. Alf! Who greenlit Alf? Why was Alf a show on television? <laughs> what a ridiculous, ridiculous television program. It's true. Uh, the Babysitter's Club ended in 1990. Oh. <laughs> so one season. Uh, Baywatch Baby ended. Sitters Club, we hardly knew you. Baywatch <laughs> ended after only one season, but it came back later. Yeah. Um, 
You can't do that on television. Have been running since 1981. That oh, was one of the first Nickelodeon. That shows. was one of the first shows my parents ever banned me from watching. They thought it was too gross. Oh, uh, I was like, okay. The whole point of you can't do that on television was being gross uh-huh. <laughs> because, like, that was the whole like Nickelodeon aesthetic early on. Was like, we're gonna do gross stuff because kids like gross stuff, and it was super gross because I of course <laughs> still watched it even though I wasn't supposed to. Yeah. But yeah, the Tracy Ullman show. Had had been running since 87. Beauty and the Beast had been running since 87. Charles in Charge had been running since 84. Pee Wee's Playhouse ended had been, had been running since 86. R.I.P. Mm-hmm. Love that show. Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers had been running since 89. Chip and Dale! DuckTales had been running since 87. You want to do that one too? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and Alvin and the Chipmunks had been running since 83. Oh, wow. I watched a lot of Alvin and the Chipmunks on my Saturday morning. We're just going to do the Nielsen ratings. So I have all of the possibilities are on the screen right there. So Nielsen ratings is most watched. Yes. Cheers. 10 points for you guys. Molly. So I think new shows take their time to crawl, climb up the Nielsen ratings as word of mouth spreads about how great this show is. So based on that, I'm not going to say a new show. I'm going to say The Cosby Show. Six That's points true. for Molly. <laughs> Erica. Oh, Law and Order. Oh, Erica's first mistake. Really? Okay. Molly. Family Matters. Nothing for Family Matters? First mistake for Molly. Come on, people. Urkel. <laughs> Ooh, who? Oh, Monday Night Football. Right. That always performs lower than I think it's going to. Two points. Oh, for okay. well, never mind. Molly. Roseanne. Eight points for Molly. Yeah. Erica. Matlock. Erica's second mistake. See, my parents didn't know anything. (laughs) I'm going to do what I've done every time we've done a TV episode and a game on TV, and I'm going to say, Cosby Show spinoff, A Different World. (laughs) Actually outperformed Cosby. (laughs) That's funny. You know, when the student exceeds the teacher. (laughs) In living color. Unfortunately, that's a no. What? New shows. I'm telling you, they take a minute. Okay. Molly. Oh, I still get to go? You got two more strikes. You got two more strikes. Let's see how many points you can get. Golden Girls. That was one of the places tied for ten. Murphy Brown. Can she complete the board for extra bonus points? Do I get extra bonus points for completing the board? You know which one keeps coming up that I'm now seeing on this list that I remember other people guessing and me being shocked because none of us knew what it was? Empty Nest. Tied for seven. Hey, this show that nobody remembers except Erica <laughs> is still on the charts. Can we wrap this up sometime in the next hour? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm using all of my brain power. It takes time. <laughs> Coach. Yeah, no, that was a bad guess. Mm-hmm. Dang. That's why I kept trying to give you a hint. <laughs> you know what I'm feeling? And this is probably not right. I'm just feeling it in my testicles. <laughs> <laughs> America's Funniest Home Videos. <sighs> I'm feeling that <clears throat> knock to the testicles. <laughs> it was the other one tied for seven. <laughs> Amazing. Okay, so I've still got two more slots to go. Two fill. to go. You're still not taking my hints, though. Which hints are you making? I don't know. I was just hoping to wrap this up in the next hour. In the next, what does that mean? Wrap this up in the next hour. What are you? What, what's that a reference to? Oh, I see. You want me to say sixty minutes, but I'm not gonna say sixty minutes because I don't think that's it. I think it's Murder She Wrote. In fact, I think it's Murder She Wrote and Full House are the last two on the board. It is not Murder She Wrote. You are out. <laughs> ah, so would I have been right about Full House? The number ten spot that you are missing is Designing Women. Oh, I forgot about that. You're about to be angry, Molly. Is it Erica 60 was right. minutes? God damn it! <laughs> See, I'm never helping you again. <laughs> so that's it for TV in 1990. Does anyone have any thoughts on any like broad, arching trends that we're seeing or anything like that? I mean, I feel like we're starting to see like the hip hop influence on like suburban television, like primetime television that everybody's watching with yeah. Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. And when I say hip hop, I don't mean black people. I mean specifically hip hop, right? Because Will Smith was a rapper and 
in Living Color, which was such a, um, had such a, a hip hop feel to it, right? And then shows like that, that I think we're starting to see more of. That influence just continues to grow. But I think it's also just representation because we saw the Cosby show start earlier than many of these others. But then we've got a different world. We've got Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. We've got yeah. In Living Color. But shows like, that were getting lots of attention right. and are actually very good. <laughs> but I want to, because you brought up the Cosby show, I also want to say I don't mean shows with black people on them. Right. I mean shows that feel like they are rooted in hip hop culture, which the Cosby show is not. That's right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, but I think, I think it's both. I think it's both hip hop culture and yeah, we are seeing better and, representation yeah. and people actually like to see themselves in their fictional media. Mm-hmm. We're still not seeing it in the in the sort of Asian cultures, but we are seeing a broader diversity, both racially and economically. And we're seeing more leading women. So we're, we're seeing a lot more diversity, like even title women like Blossom. That's, yeah. you know, it's rare even when they get featured as leading characters in the title. And we still have a way to go on all of that because yeah. it's still, actually it's probably regressed somewhat. Right, I mean, when you say Asian culture, I mean, like, I couldn't name a television show that has good Asian representation. And I want to say we're starting to see the emergence of like pile on spin-off stuff. The Ferris Bueller show, the Babysitter's Club show. Even Attack of the Killer Tomatoes, I think was a spin-off of something else or, right. um, or like a, a comic book show. It's like. Uh, the Tiny Toons. These are shows that are taking something from a larger property and saying, well, let's see if we can squeeze some more pennies and nickels out of it. But then having it actually work. But Which like, is something that is not happening as often now with all the reboots and stuff. Like here, like Tiny Toons was a legit show in its own right. For example, it held up for a long time because it was good. Same thing with In Living Color and A Different yeah. World and Cosby Show. They were all sort of feeding off of each other and it, and it was well done. Well, and I'll say like let's let's think about what the definition of it working means because like in this case like Tiny Toons is a good show and so it stayed on the air for several years and so it made and then in syndication probably and so it made money by selling advertising but like work in this business just means that it makes money right (laughs) I think the reason that they do these nowadays is because they know another Marvel movie is going to get people to buy a ticket whether it's good or not yeah Mm -hmm. all right well I think that's about it it for this video so um thank you so much for watching please leave a comment if you have any opinions on things that we didn't talk about or you have any differing opinions on stuff or if you have any other you know interesting knowledge i like learning about stuff give this video a like if you liked it if you went on a walk down memory lane through this video um or if you liked our singing yeah yeah follow the channel if you're not yet and maintain your groovy selves see you next time